Hello beautiful souls, my name is Ona, my channel is Art of Awakening. I was guided recently to really delve into the 12 universal spiritual laws. And that's because there's so much emphasis right now in the spiritual community about intuition, which is so important. But then there's also divine logic, and sometimes that is not represented very much, So, which ends up getting us to be really imbalanced. So this video is just an excerpt from my recent webinar on the 12 laws. We're going to be looking at what are the 12 universal spiritual laws and giving you an overview of each of the 12 laws. And be sure to stay to the end because if you want to watch the entire replay, I will show you how to do that at the end. Okay, so here's the 12 universal spiritual laws. Basically, they are fundamental spiritual principles that the universe is built on. As I said before, they're building blocks of creation. So of these spiritual laws, and these are kind of, I think it's better to say a spiritual principles that have been identified uh, through the ancient mystery schools, throughout kind of the, the ages of spirituality. Um, of these, there are seven, which are considered the seven hermetic principles. And these are the ones that were really focused on by the ancient mystery schools, um, the, the hermetic schools in ancient Egypt and, and other places. And um, we'll go into those briefly in just a bit. Um, and then, then there are also five additional laws that are really based on the um, original ones, but they kind of expand on them. And these were, um, the, it was the new thought movement in the 19th century that started to become uh, um, kind of aware and delving into these. So and anymore, they're considered part of these 12 universal laws. Okay, so let's look at the seven hermetic principles first, because these are the primary ones. And of these, there are um, three that are considered immutable. And sometimes you'll, you'll hear all of them um, are, are considered immutable, but these three in particular are really unchanging. This is the law of divine oneness, law of correspondence, and law of vibration. And then there are four mutable. Well, what does that mean? The, the, the mutable ones are more like this, um, kind of setting the stage for everything to happen. And then the, the mutable principles are ones that we can actively more work with um, intentionally to manifest change. Okay, so let's just dive into this. Um, so, oh, by the way, I'm gonna offer a lot of context after we introduce these laws. Um, and, uh, and I just wanna say, we're gonna be going over these kind of briefly. Uh, you can always go look them up on the internet. Um, which I encourage you to do, but I, I think it's really, really important to understand that what we want to do is, you know, we can get a brief overview here, but then we want to start putting them into context. Um, so, so this particular webinar is really about the, the overview and just sort of understanding where they all fit in. Um, but without context, they're just kind of words on a screen. But when you really start to delve into them and understand how they apply to life and the universe and everything, then that knowledge is really super empowering and will enable you to bypass a lot of pain and agony and accelerate your ascension process at comparatively warp speed compared to <laughs> bumbling around without knowing them. Yeah. First one is the law of divine oneness. And this is uh, traditionally known as the law of mentalism. Um, you can also call it the law of one mind. And basically what this is, is that there is one universal consciousness from which everything springs, which contains everything and of which everything is made. Um, I think probably most of us on this call have a, a pretty good basic concept of that. But the idea is as we start to work with these, um, it becomes more and more powerful how we actually go forward working with them. Okay, so the second one is, and, and this first one is really kind of the, the primary law upon which everything else hangs. So we are all connected and, and there's, it's like, there's this one universal consciousness that really is everything. 
um, law of correspondence is the second immutable principle. And this is basically the idea of as above, so below. So all is one and one is all, you know, you are a part of everything. And this leads to everything affecting everything else. So patterns occurring in the spiritual realm are also gonna be seen and felt in the material and in the physical. Patterns in the microcosm are gonna be repeated in the macrocosm and vice versa. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about how that is <laughs> playing out right now in this incredible time of transformation. Uh, the third immutable law is the law of vibration. And this is the idea that everything is made up of energy. And so everything and energy vibrates. So everything is always in constant vibration. Everything has a frequency um, and because everything, and this is everything manifest in the manifest world, right? Um, you get down to zero point and that's probably where things get down to almost nothing. Um, but then as you come into manifest existence, everything's gonna have a frequency. Every frequency affects everything else around it. So vibration could be either positive or negative. And um, this is going to affect what's around it, right? So if you have a really strongly vibrating positive um, frequency, then it's going to kind of help to lift everything else up around it. Conversely, if you have a really strongly vibrating negative frequency, it can be sort of like this black hole kind of effect, um, bringing everything down with it. So this is a, a really important concept, I think, which I think probably most of us already really understand, um, but just want to put it out there as one of the three big immutable principles. All right, so now we're going to get into the more immutable ones. Um, this is the law of polarity, the next one. This is the idea that everything has its opposite and opposites are simply polar expressions or extremes of the same thing. And we are living in such a polarized world right now. <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible. But if you think about when we see people on social media tearing each other apart because they can't, you know, they're on polar opposite ends, what's actually happening is they're actually on the same frequency. <laughs> you know, so there's something about that spectrum of thought that they are polarized, but they're really on the same spectrum. So if there's ways that we can work to help them to see that they're on the same spectrum, it can really help to break through the polarization. Um, so just examples of the law of polarity, black and white are extremes of value. So it's a value spectrum, even though they seem to be opposite, they're, they're on either end of the same spectrum. Um, hot and cold, it's a, a measure of temperature. So law of polarity is really about measures of things. Um, good and evil are a measure of the presence and absence of love. Okay, um, so this is considered mutable because you can choose where along the spectrum you want to focus on and strive for once you start really mastering your, your mind and remember back to the law of all mind, that first universal principle, everything's mental, right? So this is why it's so important to develop our rational thought, right? Or and to master our mind. Okay, so a lot of rhythm. Everything's got cycles, right? What goes up must come down. What goes down must come up. So we see this in nature, right? And we see it in the cycle of the seasons. We see it in the cycle of birth and death, right? And return. And often the cycles are going to be circular or spiral in nature, or they may act as a pendulum, or they may have elements of both, right? So we can feel the season sort of as a pendulum as the light goes back and forth, but it also is a circle or a, a, a spiral, right? Um, okay, so why is this mutable? Because we can really work with this law of rhythm. Um, you can choose to, if you want to try to, if you feel like you're caught in this, uh, a sort of a, if you, if you're caught in a rhythm that's, that's like really difficult, um, like if you maybe have bipolar tendencies, I've got a little bit of that, or if we're just in some kind of crazy rhythm <laughs> somehow at work, whatever, you can actually use your, 
mind, right, to start to cultivate things to help to transcend the rhythm. You, usually the rhythm itself is always going to be there, but we can work with it instead of fighting it, right? Um, so cultivating the still point is one way we can do that through mind mastery. Um, or we can start to cultivate the positive end of the cycle. Um, so like a physical example of this is like how humanity has actually escaped the extreme seasonal discomfort from the seasonal cycles through inventions like central heating or sometimes through migration. The animals will do that too, through migration or you know, um, the, the, the rhythmic pattern or tendency is still there, but you can direct it or use it to your advantage. Next law is the law of cause and effect. So this is the idea that every action has a reaction, right? Or every cause has an effect. Conversely, every effect has a cause. So if we're looking at, you know, effects that maybe this is going to be really important for looking at, at developing the, the kind of the new paradigm is if we're looking at the effects right now of what's, you know, the, the patterns that we've been using as a society, the energetic patterns that we've been following, the frequencies, we can see those effects. But sometimes it's like, people don't really quite tie to there's an actual cause. Remember that everything goes back to, to the mental, but we'll look later at how it does that. Uh, so we can look at causes that are spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical. Um, so just kind of a, just a good principle to keep in mind is that where there's something happening, there's always a root, root cause of it. And a lot of times we're shown to, you know, people start focusing on the problem when they're not actually following back through to the root cause. So it's going to be really important moving forward to start looking at root causes. Um, so, a, okay, so a cause on one plane can have an effect on the other plane. We all know this, especially there's a lot of healers in this group, I'm sure. Um, spiritual cause can affect you physically and emotionally. Uh, conversely, your thoughts from the mental plane affect the physical and, and spiritual realms, the physical realm can affect your mood, right? <laughs> your emotions, it can affect your, your mind and so forth. So again, this comes down to the power of mind um, because you can consciously choose your thoughts to attain the desired results. I think we're all familiar with affirmations and that kind of thing. Um, law of gender is the next one. And this is the concept that all things have a masculine and feminine side to them. And we tend to polarize as one or the other. Physically, we almost all come into the world polarized as either masculine or feminine, um, but that doesn't always match up with our kind of our spirit polarization. <laughs> um, but we can kind of kind of start to transcend this law by embracing, recognizing that we have aspects of both and embracing them both so that we can because if you think about the masculine and feminine, they come together to create something new, right? And when we start working with this law, we can really embrace our creative selves and empower ourselves as creators. Um, so that's a law of gender. All right, so these next five are gonna be the new thought principles. Um, those, those last seven were uh, the hermetic principles. Um, and these next five are gonna really, really be kind of working with the first seven. And the first one is the law of perpetual transmutation of energy. And this kind of expands on the law of vibration. It's the concept that energy is always in motion, okay? So that the only constant in the embodied universe is change. And I feel like this is a really, really important one to, to feel and to get comfortable with right now because we are in such a period of change. And all animals, including humans, have a certain programming that we like constancy. We like to get into our comfort zones. And so change can be really challenging. But when we start to understand that everything is always changing, it's, uh, the universe is always in flux, then we can start to relax into that change and flow with it. Um, so change is really the only constant that we have, <laughs> right? So if we can get comfortable with that change, then, then things get a lot easier. Um, so things can change from lower to higher vibration and vice versa. 
And through conscious choice, we can, through our own vibration and thought, begin to direct and influence the vibration of the energies around us again. So this is basically a law of evolution as well as a fundamental law of healing, right? Because you're looking at um, um, transmuting things and remembering the law of pro polarity we can work with these vibrations to shift and and actually turn energies around that are going negative and turn them into positive um next one law of relativity and uh, this is probably i'm not a physicist i don't pretend a lot i understand any of that but i think it probably does pertain to the, the theory of relativity that um einstein came up with um this is the idea, though this is a spiritual law, that every, anything in isolation is neutral, right? So that we can't really judge anything outside of its relationship to everything else, okay? So this connects directly back to that first spiritual law, that law of oneness, the divine oneness, or the law of all might, right? And so this expands on it in the way that, that we have to understand the relationships before we can actually place any judgment on anything or decide how to go forwards. Um, and I think this is going to be a super, super important law moving forward as, as the human paradigm shifts. Um, so just an example of this um, from nature is like the deer and the wolf. So the wolf will go and hunt the deer from the deer's perspective, that wolf is an evil being and they want to avoid it, right? From the overarching perspective of the deer herd, the, the, the wolf is actually an ally because it helps to strengthen the herd. The wolf is going to catch the weaker ones, right? Same thing with disease goes through and it actually strengthens the herd. Um, so this is just directly from nature, but this is true of anything we can, we have to be able to start looking at outside of our own perspective and be able to look at other perspectives, be, be able to start looking at other people's perspectives, the overarching higher perspective, all these things. Right now, so many people are polarized and they can only look at things from one perspective. And the problem with this is that um, you can't ever come to any kind of constructive uh, you know, uh, constructive change from that place. There's, we've got to start working with people to start to, if, if they can't see from another perspective, then we have to change how we're relating to them so that we can get through to them through their perspective and enable them to shift out of that. Um, law of attraction. Okay, this one's super, super popular law, right? We're all aware of the law of attraction, um, that like attracts like. And so going back to that law of vibration, um, when, when we're vibrating at a particular frequency, it actually tends to draw to us things that also resonate at that frequency. I think probably most of us have really experienced this. Um, you know, if you're, um, the, 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 the example that came to mind is like, if you're walking through, a, you know, a dark alley or something and you're vibrating at the level of fear, you're much more likely to get assaulted. <laughs> That's maybe a, a, a kind of an unpleasant thing, but um, conversely, if you're, if you're feeling like, oh, this is my lucky day, right. Then it's amazing how much synchronicity start to happen. You know, I have this grateful vibration or whatever, and things to start will start to come your way. Um, often, but there's another law that really needs to work in tandem with this one because it's you know sometimes we can sit and and think great thoughts all day long, but without this next law, often nothing comes of it. And this is the law of inspired action. Okay, so this is the uh, um, the idea that the inspiration or the thought influences those little nudges you get from spirit right they've got to be followed by action or if we are you know working with the law of attraction we got to start listening to those little nudges those little inspirations and then take action on them for manifestation really to come forward um you know to really affect so the results that you want in in the material or physical plane um it works hand in hand, like I said, with the law of attraction, but consider also that uh, 
you know, ideally we want to work from inspired action, right? Listening to the higher self, but it works from whatever you are tuned into. So if you are tuned into the frequency of fear, even if it's at a subconscious level, those are the actions that you're actually going to do. All right. So this is why it's so important to, um, you know, do the clearings and to really master the mind so that we can overcome those deep seated programmings that are there that are triggering actions that keep us down into a lower frequency. Um, and the last one is the law of compensation, which is also known as the law of karma. Okay. And so basically, this is the idea of as you sow, so shall you reap. And um, it's basically an extension of the law of cause and effect. So your results are dependent on your actions. It also connects back to that law of inspired action. Um, so remember that, okay, so basically, you know, you kind of get what your actions, you know, what you get, what comes to you through the actions that you do. And that includes everything from your thoughts to your physical actions. Now, sometimes we have, in, in, here's the question always comes up. It's like, what about this person that lived an ideal life and they were so good to everybody and they, you know, they did all this and then disaster happened or something. We have to remember that sometimes there are soul contracts or soul desires that need a particular lesson that are going to override the the desires of your conscious mind or your ego mind, even if it's the, the kind of higher, higher awareness that we are working with, sometimes the soul contracts or the soul desires, the soul will know it needs this particular lesson. Maybe it needs a death experience. Maybe it needs to get sick. Maybe it needs to lose all, you know, it has, because that is actually the soul desire to you know, use that lesson to bring it to higher frequency. Um, so understanding the law of karma or the law of compensation, it, it's, it's really going to work not only with our, our conscious mind, but it's our soul's contracts and so forth. Um, so if things don't make sense, <laughs> you know, it's something that's happening on a, on a higher level that will make sense eventually once we figure or be able to see from that perspective. Again, there's that law of relative, relativity, being able to understand from a different perspective. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the 12 universal spiritual laws. I really invite you to hop over to my website, artofawakening.life slash 12 laws and check out the entire webinar because we really delve into these laws and put them into context. And in that webinar, you're going to learn about um, kind of the mechanics of how the creative process works, why it's so important to understand the 12 laws, especially at this time when we're creating the new earth. Um, we're going to be looking at how the third eye and manifestation work together. I'll be giving you a message from the Akash for light workers at this time of ascension, and we'll also be exploring how we can use the 12 laws to manifest a new paradigm of love. So hop on over there, artofawakening.life slash 12 laws. Hope to see you there.